Hi, Paul. Hello. How are you? Welcome to the show. Yes, welcome, have Paul. You, have you and I been I'm on... Caitlin. I miss you. Paul, have we been on the radio together since Opie and Anthony, or no? No. I've seen you a million times at <laughs> yeah, the cellar. Yeah, we hang out at the cellar. Yeah, yeah, I we know you did Anthony's show. We when we were around. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We talked about it once outside of Stand Up New York, like a week after it happened. We were standing by that little tree outside It happened. Of I don't even remember. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the only time we've ever talked about it? Yeah. Yeah. What, is, what exactly is it? Yeah, what just when it's very mysterious, fire. isn't it, Caitlin? Yeah, it's just, yes. it oh. happened. When the, when the incident occurred. I didn't realize we hadn't, I thought we talked about that. No. Oh, I think we talked about it that night. You were pissed. Everybody was pissed at everybody. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you, you know, and like, because <laughs> it, 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 was, it, was, it was fucking up a really nice thing for a lot of people. So I understand how people were pissed, and I was pissed too, because it fucked me up too, you know? Yeah, yeah 16, you believe almost fucking six, 15 and a half years ago? Yeah, and whatever it was, man. I was, all I did was I just fucking wanted to, I was, <laughs> I was working at Madison Square Garden Theater, and I wanted to promote some dates, and the next thing I know, I'm in jail. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and my wife's like, where the fuck have you been? So, it's crazy. So when when it, Opie and Anthony were on, uh, Terrestrial radio, obviously, Caitlin. They did a, a contest where people had to have sex in public, or or were, they were could have sex in public. They didn't, weren't forced to. Sure, yeah, but, it was an option. Uh, yes, they a couple ended up having yeah. sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral, and it got Opie and Anthony fired from the radio for two and a half years. Right. Oh, okay. But Paul yeah. was the comedian who was with the couple who were having sex. In other words, sex they had spotters. Patrick's yeah, there were spotters. Cathedral. There were six six couples, right, Jim? And I was a spotter. Voss was a spotter. There were. A few I don't other. remember who else was. I, I know Voss was. I was. And it was the third year they were doing the show. Because I wouldn't go out because I had already been arrested for the show. Right. I had been arrested already, so I said I'm not going out <laughs> and doing <laughs> anything in public. Right, and I actually, we could circle back to that because that had something, to, it all kind of related when I was talking to the cops at four in the morning over this, right? Because <laughs> it was, so yeah, so there were six of us, six couples, and... It was the third year they were doing it. It was sanctioned by the network, the, the, by, by the they, station. Yep, sponsored. And, and Sam oh, yeah. Adams, the president Sam Adams was there. And that's, that's where, where the I Sam feel, was. Well, everybody, everybody kind of did this for a while. Every, I'm, I'm on radio, but like I'm pointing in both directions, right? Like it's his fault. It's his fault. Yeah. They, they, the show got screwed, including Jim, because he was an employee of the show, in my opinion, because the station fucking fucked them. You know, like they it was did. like, dude, like you, it's, it'd be one thing. First of all, it's shock radio. So that's sort of an agenda of like, we want to create controversy. That's what the shows do. Great. If they went out. And the, him and Opie and Anthony just like, we're going to do this thing and not tell the fucking the, the, the station. Then, yeah, you should have been fired. But they, they knew about it. It was the third year they were doing it. Everybody should have had everybody's back. And it there went, had been a firing before that. Psycho Mark, who was uh, very funny on the show, got fired, I think, because he brought someone into the boss's office for anal sex or something like right. that. And they're like, don't do it. But he did right. it anyway. This I think was Ope, shock right. radio. It was great radio, yeah. <laughs> I think I think Ope said, nah, I, had to do, I don't know. I, that was before my time. But when, when Psycho Mark got fired, I think it was for that. Yeah. So they'd already had a firing associated with that right. contest. And, and, they were and then they it had the voyeur bus thing that happened to you and Lewis, Me and right? Lewis Black. So, yeah. so, and then, you know, I remember the day of, like it was yesterday, like we were in the back, we were doing the pre-production meeting, this is what's going to happen. They hand out like a three-page document, lists of things to do and what the point value system is, right? So like if you fuck in the park, it's 10, 10 points. If you fuck in a church, it's 90 points, which is the highest point value. And there's also a, a two-point conversion for anal. Right, exactly. Yeah. I forgot about that. By the way, at the time... Yeah. How happy would the news have been to have gotten a copy of the actual oh sheet gosh. that had the point value? I'd be happy to have a copy <laughs> yeah, of the sheet. I'll <laughs> tell you. Oh, I, I got a story about that, too, because it was in the middle of the summer, too, which was the worst time for the happen because it's, it, it's dead news-wise. No news. Oh, oh my God. yeah. So we're sitting in there, and, like, it was so nonchalant, like, literally... Oh, Anthony was playing video games the whole time. Like he didn't even give a shit. <laughs> yeah. So and people were telling us whatever. And the the one of the managers from the station. And I remember saying because I used to be a lawyer. I go, and I remember you just gotten arrested. I go, this is like public indecency. I go, has anybody ever gotten arrested for this? They go, nah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So then fast it also that also that also tells you about the culture that we were living in back then. Oh that, yeah. I mean, because because today, oh, no God. company would ever say anything's Not fine ever, 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 ever. Well, they also at that time thought they'll never fire. Uh, right. You know, it was, it was the show right. was doing very well. And the other right. thing that Anthony said after the fact, which was really a good point, was 
it was inevitable. I go, what do you mean? He goes, because when you do the show like this, you have to keep topping yourself in a way. Yeah. Like you have to, so you do this. Yeah. And then you have, you know, you put a chick in a barrel with some snakes and she's naked and the snakes eat oh, yeah. peanut butter off her pussy. Remember that? The <laughs> fucking 50 oh gallon gosh. drum challenge. Yeah. 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 Like, like, and then it goes cow. to like, put the and two actually, you want to bust. Caitlin, and it's funny that you're here. If we could bring in the, the 50 gallon yeah. drum. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Years later, we actually did that again at XM. We had a girl taken out uh, by fucking emergency services because she had like a roach stuck in her ear. <laughs> oh. So they had to take her out on a fucking uh, a gurney or something. Sometimes the universe. It's like a horror story. Yeah. Sometimes the universe yeah. has a way of telling you when a bit's yeah. over. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like when yeah. we're done with this. When the one. police the get whole, involved, right? Yeah. And the whole culture of those shows, like Stern and everything, is go ahead, throw a car, rock at the cop car. What are you a pussy? Like that's kind of the culture. In that of the time, show. Yeah. and yeah. that's how I grew up in a way. Like you mm-hmm. know, how big are your balls? Do it. Right. And then you know, we put we used to call it put each other in the barrel. So we'd be sitting around and be me, you, Patrice, Voss, and then all of a sudden, usually Opie would be like, all of a sudden they turn it. He'd turn it on one of us and we'd start busting that person's balls for like 20. So it was just what it was, right? So long story short, uh, we do the production meeting and then I don't want to have to walk through all of it. But like uh, just before we go on the air, one of so <laughs> this is the, my, the funniest part of this. Then you know what the prize was if you won the contest? It was. Two days and one night in Boston in a tour of the Sam Adams Beer Factory. Two days and a weekend in Boston. It was not the greatest prize no, package. No, no, and I'm no. sure it was. Went on, for it. And oh I'm my, sure they were ass the... fucking in a church for it. <laughs> right, exactly. But yeah, but they get to ride on the Chinese bus for eleven dollars where the axles fall off. Right, that literally was a prize. And my couple were these two. They were sweet, but they were these two hicks from West Virginia. Like they they had never been to the big city before. Like I am not shit. So they me. came. That's why they in, wanted to go to they, Boston. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They, but, <laughs> like, but that means they came into New York to try to win this competition at their money, at yeah. their expense, yeah. to try to win this competition yeah. so that they can get a weekend in Boston. Right. And weekend. hang out with their gods. Right. right? That's like, this, what it was. Yeah. Th- this show was so hot, including Jim. The three of them, they were, they were got, like, that's what, I mean, it, that's what it was. It's There's be, people. It's to be close to the flame. People Seriously. wanting to be a part of the Opie and Anthony so thing. So I'm still thinking to myself, man, this is crazy, but I really need the plug. <laughs> <Sure>. Right. Because <laughs> it was like Thursday or something. And it's a 600 seat room and, you know, whatever. So I look to my right, and there's a chick blowing her boyfriend in the side studio before the show starts, and they're filming it for the web. And the, I don't know, is Sam Adams doing anything with this place? Can that I say I, it? Yeah, of course. Can I say it? Well, the Jim Cook, the president of Sam Adams, is standing there with a beer, laughing his ass off while the chick's blowing his boyfriend. Well, it's like smoking pot with your parents. Like, this is fucking, what could go wrong? Everybody's cool with this. It's yeah. like, Everyone's it's like, God, okay. It's like the Wild West. And we're going to fuck in a church. Yeah. The chick's blowing. The guy we're allowed? The multi-million dollar companies here. Like, Everyone's on board. Every, and, the, and the GM of the station was there. And then it goes. Ken then, Stevens, and yeah. Then, yeah, and then we go. Yeah, I had to have a meeting with him. That motherfucker, he was a fucking cocksucker. <laughs> How come you he lost his gig too for that? He, yeah, he, he, he deserved it, man, because he deserved the way he treated you and the way he treated me and the way he treated that couple because they ran for the hills like they were fucking cockroaches. So you're just a guest on the show. Like, what are they going to do to you? What are they. Well, what happened was I, you know, I was part of it. And. <laughs> And then, should I tell them the detail yeah. of this part? I don't want to know if like, this is boring or whatever. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm enjoying this. And I don't, you know. Not at all. Nobody call in and beat me up, because I'll start to get mad, and then I'll yell at you. So, <laughs> I don't want to fucking hear it. It's not my fault You'll anymore. be knocking on their doorstep. It's partly my fault. It's partly everybody's fault. So, um, <laughs> I'm walking down Fifth Avenue, and I see a church. And I'm like, oh, church, 90 points. It was on the list. It was on the list. It was the, I think it's a Methodist or Baptist church at 55th and 5th. Or I may have it off by a block. So I try to I get it. I'm like, no, I didn't even try to get it. I'm like, I'll go on the side of the church. Now it happened to be at the corner of like 55th and 5th. A cop is standing there. So he's right by the church. So I go on the side of the church and I put him against the wall. Now they wouldn't take their clothes off. They kind of like dry hump. And like she had short, short running shorts on. So she'd pull it to the side and he'd pull his dick out. I think I wasn't like right in there like a micromanaging the situation. <laughs> yeah. You're like, this is how you do this. So I'm like, I call in and I go, I want 180 points. And Anthony goes, why? I go, I got a church and I got a cop on the corner. I got two for one. He goes, did you go in the church? I go, no. He goes, you have to go in the church. I go, what? He goes, you have to go in the church. Now, this is where I fucked up. And this was my fault, and I have to take responsibility for it. I turned into a twelve-year-old and said, "Okay, again, because I grew up this You're way." You're doing a public sex contest. No, it's I'm, a twelve-year-old. Uh, right, like, but, no, no, yeah. but, but there is a there is an and Jim will tell you, and it's there's this un, so unspoken sort of pressure of like you just have balls and do what you're the performing guys. because it seems like it's it's real. 
but it's not real because right. it's a performance and it's also you know that there's a lot of people listening. Right. And right. also your friends, we were all good friends. Yeah. They would bust your balls to no ends if you pussied out. Pussied out, <laughs> right? It's, it's kind of when really, somebody it, says you can't do right. it, and you're like, I'll you're prove you're a snowboarder, you. right? I'm yeah. sure you get challenged. That's you can only go that high. You can't do a 960 or whatever the yeah, crazy shit that like, you people do. And by the way, I don't know how oh, you do it. I thanks. get scared on an escalator. So, God <laughs> so I should have just either said no, I'm not going into church. Or I should have lied and said I went in, but I thought about that. But then I'm like, with my luck, these fucking jamokes would find out I lied, and then they bust my balls sure, even more. Of course, right? of course. So I go okay, and I, <laughs> I tried to get in that church. It was locked. So I go down the street, and I'm like, I gotta find the church. And I look up, and it was like you hear, <laughs> and it's fucking St. Pat's Cathedral. I'm go, that'll work. That'll <laughs> That's do. how my brain sure. works, right? And it's open. But I'm still like, I'm, listen, I'm, I was not comfortable doing it, but I'm like, so we go in and we go way in the back, like I, as far as I could go, like a really discreet area. And a security guard happened to see, and he's like, uh, he's like, what are you guys what, doing? What are you doing? He, was, he was from another country, he had a bit of an accent. He screamed, what are you doing? I'm going, nothing. They were just hugging. I was just saying stuff like that. And then they threw us out, and we walked away, and we, um, oh, at the, at the entrance of the church, and I really meant this when I said it. The security's like, well, you, what were you doing back there? There's another guy. I go, I go, nothing. He goes, were you they having sex? I go, no, they weren't. But what if they were? I go, what, a little heterosexual uh, meat potato sex in the Catholic Church is a problem, but it's okay to fuck little boys? I said that to him. He didn't care for that comment. I remember that. That was on the <laughs> air, right? Like, yeah. 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 And, yeah. And, and, and then I... In the and, moment, probably not the... Uh... Yeah, it is and it isn't. You know what I mean? It, it, is, it is at this point, in my opinion, and it wasn't like I had a plan or anything. Of it course. was just like, you know... And, uh, and on a lot of levels, you do these contests because you want to get caught, because that's where the controversy comes in. You hope you don't, but like no one's no one's crying over spilt milk, right? right. Like it wasn't like I'm going to go out to get caught. It literally happened the way I said it. I should have just said, fuck it. I'm not going into church. It's not worth it. Or I should have lied and said I go out and, and went in. But also there was, I remember, Ope and Anne, I think both going, go in. I remember them right. saying go in. And I remember. Anthony, Anthony said, you have, I, I remember to almost this day, he said, An I see, Anthony was like, you got to go in the church, Paul. And everybody's like, I go, what? He goes, you got to go in. If you want the points, you got to go in the church. It's, if you play it back, it's like, I'm like, okay. Now, Do we have but, but I can't, but I can't blame Anthony I could have just said no, sure. right? Like that's yeah. on me. That's totally on me. I I I I, uh, I cop to that, right? So we go in the church. We and I walk away. We go down the steps and we go. This is where your voyeur bus thing comes in. Uh, I found out later. I'm like two blocks away. I'm up Fifth Avenue now. I'm like back at Fifty Fifth or something like that. And uh, cop pulls up. Another cop com pulls up, and they put us <laughs> against the wall. And I'm like, oh, fuck, right? So um, I think we're in commercial break, and he came back from break, and then another cop pulls up, and this guy gets out, and he's got gray hair, and he's got, like, eight rows of ribbons, like right. he was in Vietnam. Sure. I'm like, this is fucking serious, <laughs> right? Cool. He was like your father, like, and what, you, what were you doing? What were you doing? And I was jawboning with the cops. I'm like, look, we didn't do anything. If you want to arrest us, arrest us. We didn't do anything. We didn't, you know, whatever. And and But that, frankly, was, I thought, part of my job. Like, if you're going to put a guy out there in a mic with a microphone on the radio and tell two people to go in and have sex in a church and a cop stops you, and they kept saying, don't stay on the air. Mercurio's been stopped by cops. Stay on the air. Stay on the air. Right. So, you know, I'm reading that the show wants this. They could have dumped at any time. They could have just hit the button. You, Opie, Anthony, sure. the person said, you know what? This is getting too whatever. And, um, you know, and <laughs> so I'm standing against the wall. They get us against the wall with our hands behind our back. And the guy from West Virginia goes, he goes, leans over. He goes, I can't get arrested. I go, why? He goes, I'm on probation. Oh. Um, I go, for what? He goes, illegal prescription drugs. I go, well, don't say that to anybody, right? <laughs> so they take us in and they arrest us and um, book us and all this other shit. And, um, well, like, do we have the, uh, let's, let's get that part of it. Can you, can you figure it for the end? We, we might even have a little have bit of this? It's on, on, online. Everything's Holy online. Oh, it is? Days. Oh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it just happens uh, up to yeah, the end. Re no, I don't want to relive the this whole thing. <laughs> uh, no, just that I, moment. I have it right when it starts when they go to Paul. In, in the church. Okay. okay. Let's hear that part. Because, yeah, you were right. They, they did say go in. You're like, you're like, this is my nightmare. <laughs> Let's go back to Juicy Lips. It's Paul D. from D.C. <laughs> hey, we, uh, we are in, uh, on the steps of St. Pat's Cathedral. That was stupid. <laughs> I should not have said that. <laughs> it's all right. You had to. 
It's got to be louder. Yeah, can't you do some pedophilia? Oh, so they're on the uh, the steps leading to St. Patrick's Cathedral, Anthony. Hey, Paul. Yeah. A lot of listeners checking in complaining that your team is not actually doing this in these uh, establishments. In the establishments. You, no, what do you mean? You can't just go in front of a place like the Carnegie Deli. It has to be done inside. Oh right. Uh, we'll take them inside. We'll we're gonna we're inside. gonna we're gonna allow the point. Can you pause it? That, I remember but... almost Opie yelling, "Go in the tr-. I remember, yeah. they, they, I remember watching him right. do it. And I was uncomfortable. I I did I got, I got, they gave me the points for Carnegie Daily, but they wanted me to go in. It was yeah, fucking yeah. packed. And I was like, you know, yeah, I was kind of pussying out. And so they kept pushing me, pushing me, and I that's like again, like right there, I just should have said, you know what, fuck you guys, I'm not going in. No, the I church. understand totally. You know. Or but lie that's about that, it, but like, that's yeah. on me. You know, I can't. You know, I'm a big boy. I gotta, I gotta. You know, I gotta make my better. But also, life. the show we were, and I have to say, we get. I was there, even though I didn't. It, the show made its own mess. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And the only problem I had with it all is some people for a while didn't want to own up to their participation in the mess. And some people wanted to pass the buck. A lot of people wanted to pass it just, just to me. Those, nobody knew those two people. I was the guy on the air. And, um,. And, you know, so I just kept my mouth shut for a long time, and it all worked out, and we're all friends again and everything. I feel bad. I think he got fucked. I'm pointing at Jim because he was on a great show, and it derailed shit for him for a while. And Opie and Anthony were great guys and close friends. They wanted me to rat them out, by the way. They wanted me to rat you guys out. They put put me, like, by the way, now it's like, I got arrested at four. Now it's like eight, and I'm like, nobody's fucking coming for me. I know what's happening. Everybody's fucking running for the hills. Eight. Nine. This is a multi-billion dollar corporation. They have fucking lawyers on speed dial. Sure. Ten. Twelve. The only person that came down was Rick Delgado on his bike. Yeah. To just see if I was okay. Opie didn't try to... Nobody. Anthony, nobody. So now I'm getting a little pissed and I'm starting to see the writing on the wall. Now it's like two in the morning and there's ambulances. I'm like, what's going on? Well, the guy that they arrested is uh, was uh, with me was on methadone, and they took... They withheld his methadone, so he went, like went into shock, <laughs> and they had to rush... I'm like... And by the way, when they fuck, I don't know if you got fed in jail, but they gave me like a bologna a cold, sandwich. Yeah, a cold hamburger and tang, like even watered down tang. It was like we're not going <laughs> to give like, him a here's full. Here's your orange juice. Right, we're not going to give you a full spoonful of tang. We're going right. to give you half a spoon of the dust. <laughs> and uh, then they pull me into a room. I don't know. Did they pull you into a room or anything? But that, for us, it was a little bit less egregious because yeah. we were on a bus with girls with their tits show it was you know again we no one thought of it at the time this was 2002 there was a lot of funerals held in st pat's from 9 11 yeah like and again nobody considered that we just looked at like nobody thought about the implications of it you no. were just doing a dumb yeah. thing but the cops on that one were probably a lot more aggressive and angrier like well what happened was um and i'm not passing buck this is what i because i said to the guy like because I remember saying, too, when I were in the production, like, did hey, we ever get arrested for this? And somebody said, well, the cops love us. They're never going to, like, which is true. Like, cops, the cops did, they sure. loved you guys, right? Because I remember cops would come up to me after shows and go, oh, I love you guys on o a We listened to it in the squad car. We're not supposed to, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, he said to me, I said, why did you arrest us for this? It says, he goes, because of the, it just got too much. I go, what do you mean? He goes, first of all, it was all over the radio. They were like six of you running all over the place. You were making a mockery of the city and then the voyeur bus thing. I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, the guys really pushed the envelope too far with that. You can't drive around in a city with naked women. There's kids in the street and blah, blah, blah. He said, so everybody's radar has been up since the voyeur bus thing. Yeah. And so, you know, it was like we created a trap for ourselves as a show, I guess, generally, and we walked right into the trap that we didn't know what we were creating. They wanted right. to make you the example. Yeah, and so he <laughs> literally said, we got a call from the mayor's office and, like, a deputy mayor or something said, I'm hearing this thing, shut this fucking thing down. Anybody you find, arrest them for whatever. Anybody. I remember uh, Ben, who worked at the show at the time. Ben was smart because I remember him going, don't go, don't fuck with the church. Yeah. Don't do it. Ben was the one who was against it. He was right. He was the one yeah. going, don't go in, don't fucking do it. I remember him going, dude, he yeah. was panicking. So I guess he's a Boston guy, so he he just I guess understood that yeah. they're not gonna fuck around with yeah. this. Let's hear a little bit more just of, of that of that because uh, you are correct. You you were pushed into going in. In the future, you must go inside these venues. <laughs> yeah, oh, we were in the hotel. We weren't outside the hotel. We weren't, we weren't in the church. We're going to church. We're going. See, in. that's where I should have said that. Stupid. That's why it's such a big money uh, 
place. <laughs> All right. All right, there go the juicy lips. Paul's team. See, he was kind of skating lips. a little bit. Yes, he was. See? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you to make them honest? We did a cab as we drove by. <laughs> yeah. All right, something's going on out there. Let's go... Let's go back to the phones and check in with the Juicy Lips. All right, that's Paul good. Materials team from <laughs> but, What's up, Paul? We got him uh, right now on 6th Avenue in front of a homeless guy and uh, getting the two-point conversion on top of it. Two-point conversion in front of the homeless guy is good for 12 points. All we right. We have a cop about 20 feet away. Very nice. So uh, we're going on to the next one. I'll call you in a minute. All right. Thank you, Paul. Bye. What happened? Ben, just to let you know. All right, let's go to Paul and the Juicy Lips before we take a break. His team is representing D.C. today, Marshall and Lynn. What's up, uh, Paul? We're in St. Pat's, and we're doing the balloon knot inside, and a security guy is coming up to us right now. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. I can't believe i got to relive hey. this. All right. Stop <laughs> it. We got it. <laughs> no, let him go. He was just looking for the restroom. That's all. Well. It's a regular room. No, no, no. Are you? I need to get the rest. What's the problem? Come to the toast, Hear them giggling in the background? Yeah, giggle. You never know what's coming next. No, but the point is, can you pause it for a second? But the point is, like, this is where everybody's culpable. This moment. Yeah, absolutely. Because well, they're, they're giggling. They're saying, you got to go in. They're giggling. They're going like, holy, wait, the security. Enough is enough. The security and church. Dump. Dump. Get rid of him. Dump. Don't take his call when he calls back. So that's where, you know, people got to own that, you know, and, and I had plenty of chances to like not do it. And, you know, that was on me, you know? And so, so then, you know, I'm in fucking jail all night and I'm ripped as shit now because I had to go to my arraignment alone. And I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. Like if I showed up at the thing and I just did this to you guys, I deserve it. But you don't, I could, I knew what was happening. So I went into Ken Stevens office and I, and I had to call my, and I called my wife. She goes, where have you been? I go, I mean, I got arrested. She goes, what, what's going on? I go, why? She goes, there's all sorts of news trucks here at our apartment. They put my name and my address out, and they were knocking on her doors like CNN was there. It was just like WABC. And I said, all right, I'll call you back. And so I went up to see Ken Stevens, and I go, look, um, you got a problem. He goes, what? I go, uh, you got to get me a lawyer, and you got to get those two people a lawyer. He goes, well, you know. I go, no, no, you don't understand. You have a big problem. He goes, what? I go, um... A lot of press wants to talk to me right now, like literally, like right now. And there is video of a chick blowing her boyfriend with Sam Adams, a guy from Sam Adams standing in the back holding a beer, laughing his ass off. And that is the first thing I will tell the press. And you tell me how that's going to play with the shareholders. So either you get me a fucking lawyer. You were right. To say that, you're right. Yeah. Well, 100% no, right. You know, because I had, no, I had no other card to play. Right. Now, I, but I, I, I honestly, to... I knew those attorneys from, C, from like CBS, and, and you are 100% right. Especially since you've been abandoned. Listen, Infinity, I, I, yeah, to I, want I a lawyer. A, I was yeah. a lawyer. I worked at a big law firm. Don't insult my intelligence. You're not in fucking bumfuck West Virginia where there's one country lawyer who does wills. There is literally, they have the biggest, and I can name the law firms and probably name half the lawyers in those law firms that work for CBS. You make a phone call. I should have been out of jail within, within an hour and a half. Absolutely. And that couple, worse off, you know, they've literally, like, they're, they're, there's two bum fucks. In Just coming up to have a good time. And, you know, now the poor, the girl was crying, and they left these people in jail all fucking night. So then I said that to him, and he goes, well, I go, look. You better make a phone call. I said, I need to know in two hours. I said, in two hours, if I don't have a lawyer calling me, I'm going to start talking to the press and I'll fucking blow everybody up. I said, because my career somehow will continue without this sure. and without the show. I said, I don't want to fuck my friends over, but if you think I'm going to go through this, because if I didn't do that then, it was going to be like this... This drip, drip, drip of like them jerking me. Well, we'll try. They wouldn't have given you anything. They wouldn't have given you anything. So then they get me a lawyer, and the guy sucked a bag of dicks because he was their lawyer and he wouldn't do any work. He wouldn't do any proper due diligence. He wouldn't get the air check. He wouldn't do anything. So I went to him again and I said, I'm get, I, you need to get rid of your lawyer and I'm hiring my own lawyer and he's going to bill you. Why? Because the guy's not really representing me and I will still tell them that this video exists and I will tell them that this was sanctioned just by you personally and everything else. So they let me use my own lawyer and, you know, then I ended up, you know, getting community service. And I busted my ass, you know, not, I did not want to talk about it ever because I did not want to be one of these guys that tried to, uh, 
up his career on the back of their friends, his friends' uh, demise, right? Mm -hmm. Like I could, a lot of people wanted to, the New York Post, they would chase me, I'd have to go down for hearings, and they would chase me around the courthouse to get pictures of me, and I would hide. And I like, I remember one day it was cold and I turned my coat inside out so they didn't recognize me going in and then I turned it back and out because I didn't even want my picture in the post because I didn't want anybody, especially the comics, saying, oh, Mercurio is like selling out O&A and Jimmy to fucking get five minutes of fame and then he's going to say, I would never talk about it. I didn't talk about it for years. Year. I wouldn't talk about it because that's just, it wasn't, that's not what you do with your friends. The company did really... Uh, behave despicably by not getting you or those guys lawyers. They they really should have reacted. They wanted to distance themselves from it. Yeah. And that was why they uh, they never fired Opie and Anthony. They canceled the show, which meant that O&A got paid, called pay or play. They had to sit for 26 months, but they got paid the whole time. I, I was not under contract physically for that. Like I wound mm. up getting paid for... Uh, six months they paid me. They didn't have to pay me, so yeah. they actually did okay by me. Yeah. And they let me go on other Infinity radio stations to promote. Mm. Like, they could have been total cocks and said, stay off. But they're like, well, if you tr don't talk about this, you can go on and promote your stand-up. Like, they they were okay to me. Mm. But I'll never forget that moment. I was walking with Ope and Ant towards Opie's place. He lived on the Upper West, and we were walking by Starbucks, and Opie's on the phone with Bob Eatman telling me that they canceled the show. It was fucking awful. Did you did you see that coming? Any kind of punishment No, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. <clears throat> After a few days, you start to think something bad's going to happen. But it was the three of us walking, and he just goes, oh, all right, they're, uh, they're canceling the show. He was relaying Bob's message to Aunt and me. And then we went to Opie's place uh, and sat on his, he had like a little backyard area. I think his girlfriend was there at the time. And I'm just like, my life is over. I, I just, I, it. I just fuck. I was five months into a two year lease yeah. on a twenty four hundred dollar a month apartment. I used to pay three hundred a month. I was like, oh my yeah. god, my and you life were, is you over. Were, you were pissed. You were upset, and I understood it. I mean, I, look, I was upset. I had to do sixty hours of community service. I fucking, I lost gigs. Some radio stations wouldn't have me on. Yeah. My wife and I go to a church. She goes, how am I going to go? What were you doing? How am I going to go to a church? <laughs> so here's what happens. I'm like, I got to get. It was like August. By the way, August fifteenth. It happened. Fifteenth. Every August fifteenth for like five years. At, like a fucking anniversary present, I'd get shitty emails from douchebag fans <laughs> blaming me. <laughs> you fucking asshole, you fucking ruined. You yeah. know I punched a guy in the face at Caroline's. Was it Flea or Flick? Well, who was that fucking one name? Flea Man or Flea? Um, something. I, there was a guy. Yeah, he was a fan many years ago. I don't know what happened to he him. He was like a kid, though. Uh, he was, he was a young guy, yeah. You just troll. So, this is pre trolling on the internet. No, yeah, I had done the early show. I think I was headlining that. And I had done the early show, and then there was another show after me. So my show was letting out. There's a, you know how Caroline's sure. a bunch of people around the bar, and it was pretty packed. Uh, and I'm leaving, and I go up the stairs. And for people listening, you go up a set of stairs, but you can overlook the whole downstairs bar area. And a guy yells up to me, hey, Mercurio, you're a fucking asshole. I go, what? He goes, you're a fucking asshole. I go, what are you, who are you? He goes, this is now like 30 feet apart. I'm up now. So the whole place is quiet. And how far removed is this from the, like, how long? Uh, must have been, I don't know, maybe like a year. Or so. After... No, wait. It was more than that because you guys were back on the air. Oh, so 2004 or five. Because, three, so that, because I know three, Opie then, like, apologized for this guy and told on the air and told me personally that they didn't send this guy out. It wasn't no. like, so this guy is just this, one of these nut job fans that fucking like just can't see the emperor has no clothes, right? Like you guys have this show. You could go murder fucking somebody. If I'm, if she's with you or I'm with you, they're going to blame us and not you because the emperor has no clothes. You're the stars. They love you. You can't do anything wrong. So I'm not sure if you've checked our Twitter feed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean, yeah. right? Like it was, it was a lot of like, you know, me and they, they said shit about the couple. Like, what are you fucking? crazy anyway long story short this guy's like calling me out in front of everybody so i walk downstairs he goes you you fucking ruined all with it. you you ruined o and a you're the re you ruined and i and i walked up to him and i was so like like i'm you're like just dude heated. i go I, I go you're serious right you're not serious right i said like because i thought it was so crazy it goes yeah i go you're si i go you're serious he goes yeah you fucking he's like really loud now you fuck i go tell me you're joking i said one, a third time he goes uh i go you're serious he goes, yeah. I go, okay. So I grabbed him by like the shirt and I pulled him down toward me and I started punching him in the face at the <laughs> bar. And I go, okay. I go, fuck, go fuck yourself. And I don't know what I said. I went off and then they pulled, they threw him out because the club, I work at the club. They threw him out and I was really pissed. And I, 
I didn't think the show did it, I because I, we were kind of okay at that point. And Opie was cool. He like went on the air and said this guy shouldn't have done that, and he called me and whatever. Wow. So there was shit like that every once in a while. But then it, it got okay. But the thing that happened like two days after it was like a Wednesday or something, and I'm like I got to get out of town. So these people that we go to church with, they invite us up to their house in like Woodstock, right? We're like great, we'll go to Woodstock, right? Get out of the city because it's everywhere. It's on the sure. front page of the post. Like because there was nothing else to talk everywhere, about. Right? And yeah. these the show was huge. So we're up. Like a nice, beautiful, birds are chirping, we get up. So the guy, the host, goes into town, he gets like muffins and bagels and coffee, comes back, and we're reading the paper. And I fucking get the paper, and I open the first page of the post, and the fucking whole two pages, it's like, O&A scandal, and then my picture, and a fucking article. And I'm like, I can't let these people yeah. see this. So I take the paper, and I go into the bathroom. And I start ripping pages out of the paper, and I roll it up, and I flush it down the toilet. You but then, the toilet? And I clog the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> so now I got to like, did I clog the toilet? Do I tell them I clogged the toilet because I threw pieces of paper in it, or because I took a huge shit? I opted for the huge shit. It was just like, people didn't talk to me like, like well, you know, a lot. It was fallout. You know, it was like a lot of shitty stuff happened. And you know, you guys. I, but I thought the, the station me. fucked you guys because look, it was Bill O'Donohue, uh, the head of the Catholic League, was the one that really was Bill Donahue, yeah, Bill Donahue, and he was sort of just like this, you know. And it's the Catholic League, and I'm Catholic, you know. And this is a this is an institution like six months earlier where the bishops had a meeting in Rome over the pedophilia issue and decided there wasn't a problem. So like yeah. when I kind of said They're that in the, when I said that in the church, I fucking meant, meant it. it. And and say what you will and Jimmy talks, you know, and has points of view in his act. There was sort of comedy with a point of view in that moment. Believe it or not, it sure. was shock radio with a point of view. I really fucking meant it. You're the last people who should be judging people about fucking sex right now. After you just went to Rome with a with all your bishops and cardinals and decided there was no fucking problem anywhere in the world. Yeah, it was it was definitely an understandable. I mean, in hindsight, again, at the time, you know, I can only see it like I lost. Like you know, you you know how it is, but you work and you, like I'm like fucking the business is not gonna love me. Yeah, and you were no, and you were breaking, and you were kind of whatever, and I understood it, and that's why it would have ended eventually, though. By the way, that show never right. would have continued right. no. through Especially untouched. So we were we were never. Never. we had been friends for a while, and I knew I, my gut was over time you would you were gonna get more stuff, and then you'd see it more clearly in the light of day, and like it, you, you it, we'd get beyond, and yeah. we did. Sure. So I never pressed it after that conversation outside Stand Up New York, for which we talked for like ten minutes, and you were kind of pissed. You were like, you know, you could have done this, you could have done that, and I was like, Jim, you know, you were in the room, you know, we went, we didn't yell, but we, yeah, you know, yeah. it was a gentleman's disagreement. And I just let you go on your way, and you let me go on my way, and we never talked about it again. And we were always nice to each other, and then over time, we warmed back up to each other because I felt like I fucking know until the day I die what I just said today, that's it. I fucked up, I was part of it, but I was part of it. I wasn't it. Absolutely, and the whole show was a part of it. Yeah. O&A were, fucking Ken Stevens was. Um, you know, and, and and again, I say Ben. Ben warned everybody, yeah. and he was the voice of reason in that moment, going, don't go in. And, you know, so it wasn't like nobody, you know, it was just a were other yeah. Were other comics mad at you? Because, like, you know, O&A was a big show to promote gigs and stuff on, and that show's now gone. No, but oh. you know who got mad at me was uh, a comic, I'll just say it, Mitch Fattel came up to me at the strip one night. Not about that. Remember the uh, uh, Kathleen Turner thing? Yes. He got mad at me about that. What was the Kathleen Turner? Wait, thing? you don't have. Do we? Do we? We have audio of that. Uh, Paul Mercurio, Kathleen Turner. <laughs> Jeez, you have, oh Just my see, God. No, don't, don't tell them what it is. I'm reliving all this. Uh, come on, it's fun. <laughs> You're reliving. It was your funny. Worst moments it here. was very funny. Uh, Kathleen Turner. You were in Cleveland at the time, and I think you told people on stage that it happened. I think I did too. I ve I vaguely remember that. I think you, they said you you did. You told me. <laughs> is there any video of that? I'm looking right now. Uh, no, I don't think there is. It was just audio. Oh, I'm, no, no, I mean audio, like uh, audio. Oh, sorry. Yeah, put let let play. Uh, well, can we get to that um, part? Yeah. All right. Let's. We'll go with this. I'm probably gonna lose oh. gigs again because nah. of this. Now <laughs> people never knew about it. Now know about it. No, now everyone's gonna be trolling you on the internet, yeah. searching you. I, we thought there'd be more of a reaction. <laughs> yeah, you know what it was. The uh, the audience. I I could and I could tell this too. The oh, this is part two. Sitting there. Let's go to part one. <laughs> part one. <laughs> Perfect after that, you should have yelled, Papa! Papa! <laughs> That's oh, part, part three. three. Yeah, you got part We're one. Very far away. We'll go with the, yeah, we'll go with part one. No, you, you yeah. see, this is the one I clicked. It doesn't we'll say part this? three there. That's okay, right. that's part three. Yeah, it does if you select it. All, it. it all this is part three. That I think that, uh, that person will win a fine prize from the Opie and Anthony show. So uh, I'll just explain. <laughs> Kathleen Turner 
was doing a play. I, I don't remember the what graduate. was it. Uh, the Graduate. On Broadway, That's right. and she was nude. There's a scene where she seduces him, you know, just like in the movie, she takes her clothes off. I think it was Jason Silverman, the kid from American I Pie. I vaguely remember, played yes. Played the Dustin Hoffman. And I go in with Rick Delgado. So, oh, and Rick was recording it. And Rick, well, what Rick, yeah, well, I don't know why we had to do this, but we went into the men's room, and he went in one stall, and I went in another, and he handed me the recorder under the thing. And I don't know why we had to do that, but we really did that. And then... um Oh, because I had to have it on because I was saying it. So we get seated and, you know, it's dark and the play's going on and then... Let's find it. Mm -hmm. Everyone was starting to get a little suspicious. Yeah. Even the people down there on Broadway. So uh, Ann and I went on the air and said, well, you know, uh, something's going to happen yeah, Jump in a little bit. Yes. Remain nameless. That had uh, four recording devices. Um, that's the rumor. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we got uh, three that worked. No one... No one sits near each other. No one acknowledges keep each moving. other. Yeah, keep uh, moving. This morning, even more nervous. And, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, he, he called me before the show, up. and I, um, I, we decided not to answer any phones. You should jump. Keep moving. Yeah, Scott, wait until you find where his voice. Drop the down on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look. Anthony. <laughs> the, the screaming that I started screaming. You know, they went nuts. Ah, this person will come forward eventually. eventually. Keep going. Well, you, can do. You, I, you I actually think it's back, Troy. I, I think Maybe it's damn thing off. Maybe someone, Travis, and, uh, can find it or somebody. Just somebody can find that moment. Uh, yeah, we yeah. do have it is in there. Well, why don't you explain the moment? Yeah. You want me to explain? Yeah, it? yeah. sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so we get seated and we the play starts. The lights go down and the play starts, and I'm sitting next to Rick, and then I'm waiting for uh, the moment in the scene where she drops her dress, and she does, and as it's coming. <laughs> You know that scene in Godfather where Michael's at the table with uh, Salazzo and the cop? Sure. And he goes, gets the gun, and he's sitting down, and you hear the subway, and the camera's coming in, and you hear, like, almost his heart beating, and it's coming. So that's exactly how I felt. I'm like, uh, and then I just, like, stood up as soon as she dropped her thing, and I just screamed as loud as I could, Kathleen, put your goddamn clothes back on! <laughs> and I immediately sit down. And everybody's like... And I mean as loud as I could. And Rick is like grabbing his mouth. He's trying not to laugh so hard. He's like grabbing his face, right? <laughs> so I just sit there. So now security comes over and they know something happened, but they don't know who did it because I'm not tipping my hand, right? Yeah. So I just, that was it. And but then the, uh, whoever else was next to you didn't like rat you out Yeah, or that's what happened. Wow. Like, we won't, it's one way to you. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. So now I'm like caught and I don't know what to say. So I just start going... This is disgusting. <laughs> I'm a Christian. No one told me there was going to be nudity in this play. Do we have this, Travis? I think we have it. Teft has it. I don't know if that. One second, I'm on sending it, it to Troy. Teft is a god. We might have we might have turned turned the recorder off after that, but I just I rem I, rem I do remember I that. I decided part. I had to turn the tables on the guy and take the offensive. So <laughs> yeah, it was smart. It was smart. I was like, what You're am like, I going to do here? I've Troy has it from other mistakes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boy, I hope you don't hate me after all this. No, I think it's. Funny. I don't do any of this stuff anymore. <laughs> okay, I think we have it. I don't think anybody could get away with any Wait. of this stuff anymore. <laughs> put your goddamn clothes back on. <laughs> Did you hear the gas? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sweating. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you all right, that was it. Did you hear the gas? The woman <gasps> <go> <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was and funny. It, and it was this fast. I was like and I I am not kidding you. It was just like that scene of the Godfather. I'm like and I just was like, fuck it. And I went, Kathleen, put your goddamn clothes back on. And I just sat th like, you know how when he shoots him, he doesn't run out. He just mm -hmm. stands there, he drops the gun and walks. Yeah. That's kind of what I did. I just sat down. I didn't because I didn't want to draw but the gasp, and then somebody immediately ran me out. Right? <laughs> I've never. And there's another recording of that, I think. There's a yeah. couple of different ones. I remember you going, you know, I'm a, I, I want my money back. Yo, yeah, yeah. So, so what I did was, I ca so now he's taking me out. We're sort of, um, if you're facing the stage, we're pretty much stage left uh, in the orchestra about halfway up. I'm about three, four seats in. So he pulls me out. And I'm like, I'm a, and so I immediately start like, this is ridiculous. You, you, I, I'm offended. You know, I'm a Christian. I go to church. I, this is, I, you, you should have told me. No one, there should be some disclaimer on the, I'm, I'm just, sure. so the whole time we're walking, sir, just be quiet. So I've got him back on his heels and then he takes me over to the, now there's a security guy there and there's a cop there. 
So I go over, I go, I want, I go, I walk over right to the ticket booth. I, I go, I want my money back. They go, what? I go, I want my money back. I paid good money for these tickets. I didn't even pay for the fucking tickets. Yeah, the show paid for the tickets. <laughs> I go, you people have nudity in a play and you should be telling people, if I brought my son here and I just ranting and ranting and ranting sure. and getting more agitated and the guy, okay, sir, okay. And he fucking, he pays me back the money and I walk out. <laughs> And I gotta tell you, I don't usually brag about myself, but I was pretty proud of that moment. Because it was it funny. Was, yeah. Because if you wrote the sketch, it was a perfect topper to the whole sketch. It's it like was funny. Out. And then, and so again, that was like before Voyeur Bus, I think, but it was part I don't of, remember. it was part of that whole, like, we were like, it was leaving the studio and going into the world and doing the shit that we were doing in the studio, in the world on a regular basis and getting away with it. And people encouraging you. The fans thought I was really great because I did it. The you know the show thought it was really cool. So I was on stage, I think, and I did say it in Cleveland. It's very, it's a very vague memory. That was two thousand one or two. I think yeah. Somebody told me that you told this, the audience that uh, Paul McCurry just told Catholic to put her clothes, put her clothes back. back. I probably did. Yeah. I, uh, maybe yeah. I wasn't in studio. I don't remember. I, I just don't remember it all. Yeah. It's kind of a fucking foggy. Yeah. Uh... And now I remember why they we we had more than one recorder just to be safe. Sure. I think so. I think Rick had one on him, and maybe somebody else was sitting. And now, and I never mentioned Rick. Like I didn't want to. Yeah. Whatever. Like we had a we had a, we had a meeting point planned afterwards, like at a bar, which we did, and we <laughs> met and. And uh, he was a good producer, Rick. He, I mean, he, he was. He was good. a good producer. Man. So he was good, and he was. Uh, he was a good guy. Like he. He like as a producer, but also just as a person. I think he like you know he cared about like what everybody was doing, and if people you know got in trouble and shit like that. He 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 was pretty good through all you know. And then we just you know kind of that was that. And then but so did Mitch Fate, for the rest so of Mitch Fatel sees me in the yeah. comic strip yeah, one did, night. Did did Rick stay for the whole show? Did Rick? <laughs> I hope that, yeah, like, Rick actually enjoyed the program. Yeah. He, came back, he had merch, he had a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Worked out with his playbill. You know, he got an autograph from Kathleen Turner. <laughs> yeah. That would have been the ultimate. Um, he goes to me, and then Mitch is a good friend, so if Mitch hears this, I'm not, I don't care, whatever. But he, you know, I get it. He goes, you know, I don't know how you could do that. You're a fellow performer and how you could do that to another performer. And I'm like, you know, I kind of get it. Yeah. But, you know, but still... But, you know, Being again, funny. he's, again, like... It was a heckle, I guess. Yeah, he's more mature than I was at the time, you know, so it's just... I know, now Mitch is doing nothing but having threesomes all over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All Mitch is doing is dropping loads. <laughs> exactly. Mitch like, wins. Fucking <laughs> <he's laughs> guy blows loads all over the place. He's, he's married. De- he's in Denver with eight stripper wives. <laughs> he has a hot wife, and they have threesomes with girls. Yeah. It's a great life. Right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He just, he's Honey, a, I'm bored today. She, yeah. Should we go find our next one? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had one? <laughs> no. Have you? No, I've had a couple. They're overrated. Yeah, yeah, overrated. I uh, is it? Why? Do you feel like you just? I would feel spread thin, like trying to satisfy this one, and then you get this. Stuff. You're doing you something, really? and you're well, like, you're a I, giver. I think I'm supposed to be loving this more than I am. It's okay, like you know. I've got. I, I, you know what? You I had a couple girls blow me. That was nice. You like that <laughs> yeah. boy at the same time? Yeah, like, or I was deeply kissing one while the other one blew oh, me. That was nice. kind of fun. <laughs> well, I think there's. See, also... but I would like, I would like do, I would like to do one from behind while she's eating out the other one. That would get me going. I might have done that. I don't remember. There's also so much hype around it. Yeah. That this is the thing that I never thought yes. I would experience. <laughs> and now I'm experiencing it. It's like, oh, it's just a thing. Yeah. You're like, oh, right? yeah, this is just the same thing as maybe. But with one more. <laughs> right. one more. Exactly. It's, you know, all right, so now it's just me and uh, no, I guess. <laughs> exactly. my Plus parents. Realize... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Too far? Too far? Plus you realize it's not that special when like... Uh, a hot dog does it, you know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> like, it's really not that. <laughs> it's not thing. that tough to come 